Yeah, hello. Hello. Sir. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir. We'll just give a brief introduction and then afterwards we'll invite you for the session, sir. Okay. Yeah, please. Very good evening to one and all. A warm welcome to each one of you to this Innovation Club session called the Open Session Come Enrichment Session. Let me give you a brief historical profile about this Innovation Club at Ethno Regional Centre Cochin. The Innovation Club at Ethno Regional Centre Cochin, in fact, was initiated under the encouragement of the National Center for Innovations in Distance Education, which is at IGNO headquarters, Delhi. The Center for Innovations in Distance Education was established in December 2005, and it is a facility for promoting, supporting, re-engineering, and disseminating innovations in open and distance learning system. The NCID is a ground for nurturing bright and inquisitive minds whose ideas and explorations are expected to develop the audio system to suit the needs of Gen Next. The center's goal, in fact, is to develop a culture of continued search for new and innovative solutions to offer seamless education for all and to achieve cost efficiency in its operations and provide borderless access to quality education and training. Further, uh, you would all be happy to know that IGNO Oh, IIC, that is the ICMO Institutions Innovation Council, has been organizing various activities supporting innovations and startups in the university. Under Regional Center Cochin, a series of monthly lectures identified as open session come enrichment sessions have been held at RC Cochin since September 2018. In fact, the sessions are usually held with an objective to enrich and generate awareness amongst the learners of ICMO on a wide range of topics ranging from time management, career management, and, and to the latest being uh, unleashing the power of effective communication, life and uh, enri enhancement skills for enriching student life. And in the last month, we are also did a session on the activities under the Swachta Pakwada campaign. In fact, the session is also a platform to resolve the student's grievances with respect to the subject the student is pursuing in IGNO. So today's Innovation Club session is on the topic Innovations for Transforming India by Dr. Radha Krishnan E.K., Associate Professor, MG School of, uh, School of Biosciences, Mahatma Gandhi University, Kottaya. In fact, the session is being held as a part of the National Innovation Day celebrations, which is being celebrated on 15th October to commemorate the birth anniversary, anniversary of the former president and scientist and innovator, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. So I am so grateful and privileged to invite Dr. Uh, Radha Krishnan to this session. But before uh, I uh, invite him to deliver the session, let me introduce uh, you all to our regional director, Dr. J.S. Dorothy, madam, under whose uh, guidance we are conducting these sessions. I would just invite madam to the session as well. And I would also invite madam to kindly introduce the resource person to our students uh, in this session. On behalf of IGNU, we are grateful to Dr. Uh, E.K. Radhakrishnan for being with us and we take the pleasure of sharing his profile. Um, sir has uh, completed the B.Sc. in Zoology and also a M.Sc. in Microbiology followed by Ph.D. in Biotechnology and postdoctoral in Molecular Biology and sir has been serving as Associate Professor at the School of Biosciences, NG University, Kottayam from 2022. And 
Uh, sir was joining joint director uh, from 2018 on for the Inter University Center for Organic Farming and Sustainable Agriculture, Mahatma Gandhi University. Sir was also the director from 2019 for Business Innovation and Incubation Center at Mahatma Gandhi University and honorary director for Dr. N. Radhakrishnan Foundation for Medical Innovation and honorary director for, uh, in Industry Academic Interface Center and also board of directors at MGM Innovation Sir is also the nodal officer for innovation and entrepreneurship Kerala Startup Mission. And we are so grateful to you for sharing your time to be with us and share your views for this great day on the uh, of Innovation Day, uh, the birth uh, uh, anniversary also of uh, former scientists, innovators, and APJ Abdul Kalam. And we also acknowledge the role played by Dr. Shibu in introducing the person. It is one of the academy academy uh, collaboration uh, example also because very rarely we come across a postdoctoral uh, person returning back to India to give back to the society. So with such a profile person, we throw the floor open to Dr. Radha Krishna Nike. Thank you for being with us. So over to Dr. Radha Krishna. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Oh! Thank you very much for uh, providing an opportunity to uh, be part of the program of uh, ICNOW. And uh, indeed, I take this opportunity to invite. Oh! to collaborate with us and also to join with us in developing networking program for the benefit of society. And uh, I would like to continue. It is an inter interactive session. Sir, sir, I'm Fahim, but I have a request, please. Yes. Sir, Rekha, sir, I have proposed her, but she's not accepting my proposal, sir. I'm going to drink Harpik now. I'm going to die, sir. I have no reason to live this life. Ask. Kind, kindly unmute. Kindly unmute. Let the resource person continue with the session. We can take the uh, sessions. Uh, we can take the questions only in the end. So you may please continue, sir. Okay. Is it okay? Everything fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. you can continue. Shall I proceed? Is it okay? Yes, sir. You may kindly continue yeah. with your question, sir. Yeah. Kindly continue. Okay. So, like, let me share the slide. So, whether my slides are visible? Yes. Now it is visible, sir. Okay. Okay. So, myself, 
Dr. Radhakrishnan from Mahatma Gandhi University. Hello, madam. Is it audible? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Bit louder, if you can. That would be better, sir. Yeah. At any point, if there is any like uh, uh, like uh, uh, lack of continuity, please call me because yeah, I am like sure. okay. Sure. I am assume, assuming that uh, the slide is visible and uh, as, as accordingly I am continuing. Sir, so now the slide is not visible. Earlier it was visible. I don't know. Yeah. Is, is it okay? Yeah. Now? Yes. Is it okay? Yes. Can you so, uh, yes. Uh, so we have uh, the so called uh, Business Innovation Incubation Center at Mahatma Gandhi University to promote innovation and entrepreneurship especially among the academic community along with that one to the public in general especially focusing on the central kerala which is well known for the many natural resources and the traditional businesses and uh, hello Is it okay, Madam? Now? So, like uh, we are trying to build the innovation ecosystem, especially in the central Kerala. And uh, that is the very basis of the same. And before, like, discussing about the innovation, especially it is the right time for the great India to take lead. Why? Because we have to connect these two things. I think the slide is visible. Yes, sir. Yeah, so yes, for these things to discuss, we have to start from the words of Mahatma Gandhi. And as per Mahatma Thank Gandhi, you. the primary purpose of education should be to prepare students for a life service towards the rebuilding of the nation. And on the other end, you can see the current status of India. We are becoming the uh, country with highest number of population. So now, by connecting these two things, what sort of transformation is required from the education sector for the transforming India? Because the purpose of education is to be redefined in the sense that there are many parallel so-called revolutions are happening in India to how drastic change in the education system, purpose of education, and the outcome of education. And there are several programs the state and the central governments have already been implemented. And all these are aimed to make, to make changes. Because as we are the number one in the population in the world, we have the responsibility to take India to the leader of uh, world in various sectors. And very important sector is the innovation-driven economic development. So the next stage of India's development could be possible only through the economic development. And that too, introducing drastic changes in the uh, like uh, education system and that is why these type of programs are very important and that's why the institutional innovation council and other uh Cindy's or uh systems are introduced into the academic community to nurture the students and to provide them the exposure to the need of the nation so now the basic purpose of education itself is to be understood 
and it is to cater the need of the nation. So the need of the nation will keep on changing as it progress, because the national, uh, the need of the nation, it will not be the same today, 20 years before or 20 years after. So it will keep on changing as per the progress that we are making, as per the global changes that are happening. And so we have to equip ourselves. The strength of the nation should be uh, increased. The economic status should be increased. The, uh, the population or the, uh, uh, the youngsters of the country should be well equipped. For all these things, we need to have the responsibilities So the purpose of uh, any any sort of uh, education is considered to generate or create the knowledge or a knowledge society. So now we are a knowledge society, and the knowledge society as it is. So the knowledge society. Call Agas. Sir, at least make it silent. So here comes the potential of our education system. So the basic purpose here is to generate a knowledge society. And by considering that the knowledge society will empower the rest of the like nation or empower the nation and uh, make it more powerful and also more sustainable and more progressive but by considering the existing system the knowledge up to what level it can be made powerful for the defined purpose so that is a major question that we have to address and that is, that is a major question that we have to consider from the education sector and this question is very important because any course or any program or any training or any expert or any human resource that we are developing and we are generating or uh, we are nurturing some sort of knowledge in specific area by expecting that oh. by expecting that this society will become the power or will become the uh, will give the strength to support the development of the nation but knowledge by itself is not powerful knowledge by itself cannot be powerful because there is something like which is missing in the existing system that means a sort of action or in sort of realization or or a sort of application or a sort of connecting the knowledge to the real requirement of the society then only it will become more powerful so our existing system are challenged by the so-called action we have the knowledge society we have the societal problem we have the industrial problems we have the demands in various sectors for various type of development but the action plan is missing because the knowledge society is somewhat segregated or separated from the real problem of the society. And there we need more like a sort of connecting or networking or removing the barrier between the knowledge and the problem or knowledge and its application. And when coming to the potential 
application of the knowledge into a powerful manner, the action it should be defined uh, very well because it that itself is an area that should be discussed and uh, that itself will take hours to discuss because that is a big area because we are creating a knowledge society but the question is what is missing to make them to have the power enough to make changes to the nation oh. and, Is it okay? Hello, madam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's okay. You continue, sir. So why? Because now from the knowledge society, or we are moving into the stage of knowledge economy. So now India's strength is considered to be knowledge economy or knowledge-based economy. and how we can contribute to this one that's a major question here comes the need of innovation here comes the need for networking here comes the need for uh, changes in our like conventional way of uh, uh, like uh, conventional thought processing conventional approach conventional mindset and everything because now we are moving into so called knowledge economy and here the power of the knowledge should be transformed or it should be directed towards economic development so how this knowledge can be used for economic development that is a major question that we have to address and that's a major question that we have to give uh, like us a uh, problem to the academic community to the uh, like research community and uh, to the higher education sector because by the simple generation of knowledge we cannot reach the knowledge based economy but the during the knowledge creation we should also inculcate or we also how to nurture how this knowledge can be shaped as per the demand or it can be connected for the economic development and one major area india now focus is a so called bio economy so it is one of the major area that india is considered to lead the world in the coming years because of its rich biodiversity natural resources and its indigenous uh, bio based products and technology and all these things are totally explored in the sense that only limited percentage and very few of this one has been explored for its uh, full potential so this is somewhat totally unexplored one and uh, now these are the things where like uh, we have to like identify the meaning of new terms also for example earlier for a student studying in biology like he or she may not have to understand about the so called uh, uh, economy or it it seems to be a different one and now the terms are different new terms are coming that bio economy that means bio based economy that means uh, like it doesn't mean that it is for biologists it's for any subject it can be the contribution by a, a student from or a expert from commerce background it involves commerce marketing economics like computer science artificial intelligence and anything and everything which we are specializing and which we have expert expertise so networking all of our resources and expertise as per the need of the nation is very very important for such uh, like progress to happen now we are uh, having the like situation in such a way that everything is reachable to us because we can get connected to anything and everything and we have as uh, we are conducting now we have online mode of communication meeting interaction and things became easy and anything can became available in in your hand so but the question is how productively and how efficiently we are making use of these facilities for uh, for this uh, like uh, 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 like advances for the expected outcome or the expected development of the country that is very very important one and uh, and uh, uh, like now i uh, like uh, 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 would like to have interaction with uh, uh, like uh, the participants before proceeding the next uh, like part
and uh, any question is there you can uh, have interaction and as per that we will plan for the next part please Sir, I think no one is ready to interact, sir. Okay. So, how long the program will be? Have to? Half an hour, sir. Half an hour. Oh, I think uh, it's uh, almost over. So, I so, just sir, wanted to... Have your session. You can, you, can add, you can have your session for another half an hour, sir. Okay. Okay, fine. Yeah. So, uh, the message that I communicated here is that a knowledge-based uh, uh, economic development is the need of the hour. And I will just go through some of uh, the like examples or some of the uh, like uh, simple things where some sort of changes in our, our approach or conventional approach and uh, how it will be effective and how it will be useful for making some changes. Because without like initiating any change, our progress will not happen. By uh, not accepting the changes to happen, nothing will happen. So we have to see what sort of changes that are required. So as you can see from uh, the slide here by uh, Sundar Picha, you can see that progress is impossible without change. And those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. So this is an important question that comes to us also, like for the academic community or any community, the progress can happen only by accepting the change. The change here is that the higher education sector is given the responsibility to take the development and progress of the country. That is our responsibility that is interested by the nation. And so we have to act accordingly. And by taking this as our challenge for our society, we can do wonderful things. And but the, for this to happen, like uh, it will not happen simply because by uh, introducing something into a society or into a group or into a community, so-called academic community, where the those who should take the lead, if they are in the comfortable zone, it will be difficult for to implement for us to implement these type of things. So for introducing the innovation at the education sector, and we like how to identify the real societal problems. And for that one, the learning from the textbook, learning from the web resource, or learning from the other social media, it will not be uh, of uh, like that much importance. We have to realize it by passing through the uh, real societal problem itself. And that is a great challenge because the academic community, by enjoying all the comfort zone with all the supported, uh, like accessory, uh, supported advantages given by the government, and they have to come out of the comfort zone and provide the message to the students that you are studying something which is for the future of the nation and the purpose of education, or you are given the chance to study because the nation is expecting more contributions from you to build the nation. So it's for, it's not for you, the nation is given the like uh, opportunity for you to learn, but for the nation, for to contribute to the nation. So what is, such a type of responsibility or message should be given to the students. And for that one, the teachers should accept this. The academic community means the teachers should come out as the leaders of these things. And they should prove them, themselves as leaders of these type of missions. Then only it can be effectively communicated to the students. And here, a handholding support is very, very important. So this institution innovation councils, the objective is to provide the handholding support to the students to nurture their ideas as per the emerging need of the nation. So the responsibility here also involved to ensure progressive 
and the productive growth of the students in their intellectual growth, in their innovative thoughts, in their entrepreneurial skills. And all these things are the responsibilities of this type of innovation in, 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 in uh, council centers. They have to ensure that such platforms are given so that the students are given the best opportunities to uh, uh, work or contribute for the nation development. And generally, we think that the progress or those who are coming out of any area or those who are becoming lead leaders of anything or those who are coming as well established or uh, uh, like uh, 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 well established persons in the society, we like have to realize that luck is not an important factor. Generally, we consider that that person got that position because of his luck, but it's not having an important role because we have to ensure we have to communicate to the students that we have to be like how the approach to never give up. That means we have to be consistent in our effort, irrespective of the success or failure that are happening. We have to be consistent in our, our effort, and we have to keep on working, keep on working to improve ourselves, to improve our approach, to improve the nature of learning, to improve the application of the learning, and all these processes should happen. So, and this one, again, the uh, institution innovation councils type of uh, centers are having the responsibility to showcase a real problem to the students. Students, they are coming into the institution through a well-nurtured platform, and they are having the experience only through the textbook and also from the teachers. And so the innovation, institutional innovation councils should have much responsibility to identify some of the real problem, the regional problems, and showcase this to the students. And let these problems be showcased to the students so that let them undergo intellectual exercise to come out of solutions for some of the burning problems of the society. So if such things are happen, even the better presentation of our problem to the student, that itself makes sense because that itself will make the solution easier. So the responsibility of this institution innovation council should also change into identifying the real problem of the society. That is very, very important. The problem means it is not with respect to the like particular sector. This include problem with industrial product development, problem that are there with uh, any sector like a medical sector, problem with uh, the common man, problem with the uh, agriculture, the problem with the use of water, or the problem with anything and everything. So when coming to the regional, like a uh, uh, particular region where the institution is being located, we have to have a better connection to the immediate surrounding, our village, our panchayat or municipality, or other local governing uh, uh, bodies. And we have to have a better interaction with them. We have to have field visit to several places to see what the opportunities and what the real problems there, whether we have like a problem with the uh, networking, whether we have problem with uh, like a uh, lack of job for the educated community. That is a major problem with uh, Kerala in general, but we can see that lack of job for educated. And we have several so-called uh, educated unemployed uh, women is there. And we have several uh, like problems are there like that. How effectively as an institution, we can better present this one to the students that uh, while you learn through this uh, any subject, you can connect with this problem of the society and come out with a solution. So we have to change the approach of the student from just a like a learner of some definition and presenting of uh, something for the examination purpose alone. We have to change the approach. The academic approach should be changed. For example, in the typical or conventional system, what we are trying is that we are giving particular message, like uh, we are uh, uh, teaching the student in such a way that they are learning something. And whenever the exam is over, or when they are uh, like completing the exam, the mission is supposed to be completed. But it is not the purpose which is actually meant for. So when a uh, uh, knowledge or when a particular topic uh, is being like communicated or discussed with the student, 
Now the question is that how effectively the teacher can motivate or enlighten the student to connect this one with the problem of the society. Here comes the changes need for changes in our conventional like, uh, uh, like uh, uh, analysis or uh, evaluation process itself. Because instead of like uh, making the students to like uh, recollect something and write the same word as the teacher has given in the class and uh, uh, like uh, make him to write the same word again and for the getting the mark. That's a conventional system. We have to change that one. And we have to change in such a way that when it's up to some particular like a topic or particular area is uh, given or discussed with the student. So let him go through the society and identify what is the real application of this knowledge for the benefit of the society. So from this information or knowledge that he is getting, let him identify the problem of the society and also let his exam be like generation of some solution for this one. So if it is going to be like that, the students will have like a large number of ideas. They will come out with a, uh, a good number of ideas, potential ideas, which can have revolutionary impact. Because during the like learning process itself, the student is getting exposed to the need, getting exposed to the need of the society. So he can think about the solution. And some of them will have like revolutionary impact of the society. The greater things can come from anyone. So our uh, our like basic understanding on the knowledge itself should change. It doesn't mean that a person is having a particular label, whether it is a teacher or whether it is a professor or whether it is any such title, he is not alone the uh, knowledgeable person. A knowledgeable person can, in, can be anyone who can give the direction in a different way to solve a problem. So we have to connect all this knowledge across the society. And we have to like make the students to have a knowledge networking and to have more interaction with the various types of members and various types of uh, people, how we can be uh, like communicate, uh, can be transformed into some sort of application or product or technology. So here comes the need of the nation. And for this one, like uh, for this one, the very basic things of innovations uh, should be given to the students. And when introducing the very basic things of innovations, the very basic quality of the person it, itself is very important. Innovation, entrepreneurship, or startups, this doesn't mean just to create money. And this cannot be done by all the people. This cannot be done by anyone because a person should have some of the very basic personal qualities and these qualities are very essential for him to be an entrepreneur for him to be an innovator for him to take the lead of the nation and these personal qualities we can say that these are like uh, cannot be uh, like obtained from any course these cannot be obtained from uh, through money this cannot be introduced to someone because these are some of the things that are there with like uh, uh, our students but we have to ensure that they are confident enough to like uh, build the qualities and capabilities in them in such a way that they will become highly potent entrepreneurs for the nation. And there is some examples. It is very essential for the like uh, to give uh, like uh, simple directions to the students that there is no shortcut for like to be a successful, successful entrepreneur. And any, any change that we are expecting, for making any change that we are uh, dreaming, we should undergo a process or there are some pain points are there. So the simple example given here, you can, in some way we uh, see that the crooked uh, like nuts, they will remain like uh, not have made again and again. But the fact is that even though they escape from the repeated like uh, uh, challenge by the hammer, the problem is that once they are outside, they will be easily subjected to like a so-called corrosion and destruction. But if the uh, like a nut, if it goes uh, like into the so-called wood or any material, 
it will be safer for a long time. And also, it can like uh, support the strength of other material too. So these are very simple messages that we have to give to students that any pain that are coming to them is for giving strength to them. So how to like uh, uh, make the like academic community uh, to have these very basic things, these are very important because we have to take struggles, strain and pain and we have to undergo struggle and we have to take uh, efforts then only we will make, uh, we will be competent enough to take any innovative steps to make changes. And while entering into such a thing, it is very possible that we have to change our mindset. That is a very, very important thing. In uh, irrespective of any potential or any capability, any skill or anything, the very basic change is there with the changes in mindset. And by change, introducing the changes in the mindset, then only we can introduce the potential of innovation into the academic community. Because here, the, as it is mentioned, not every closed door is locked. We have to push it. Because if our mind is blocked with something, and if it provides us with a barrier to approach something, so we cannot uh, like uh, uh, explore the possibility. But if we are open, just go and just try to open, we may get enter into the opportunities or possibilities of opportunities are there. And are we ready to take this risk is very, very important. And this is the way the, our conventional education system is working because we can see here a range of animals who are having special specialized skills and they are meant for different purpose. But in our education system, this is just like that. We are training all potential uh, candidates having different skills and through the same platform and we expect them to perform equally well in all the so-called uh, qualifying exams and other things and that should be changed because the strength of person a will differ from strength of b strength of b will differ from strength of c so by conducting a particular exam it will not give a ideal platform for like uh, uh, supporting the best capability or to support or motivate all the students equally. And here comes the need for innovation where we have to give, uh, nurture the innovation among students so all of them can explore their potential in different ways. So again, it is a responsibility of Institution Innovation Council to provide the platform. Let all students come to this council, its program, and some sort of physical space, some sort of uh, so-called workshop, some sort, uh, sort of uh, a labs or whatever it is. Let them do something and try to identify the potential or skill of one person and let him work in that area. Other person may be interested in other area, let him work in that area and let them be given the flavor of each of these things. Then only they will also identify that this is the one that I am interested so I can do uh, like this particular area, or this is the other one that I can do. So are we providing such a diverse flavor to the, our student? That is the most Im important thing and uh, also our responsibility. And the very basic things of success should also be communicated or this should also be the topic of discussion because when we see someone as successful, we see the success, success phase or success dimension only. But the real thing is that this particular person might have undergone so many other challenges, including hard work, persistence, late night, rejections, sacrifices, discipline, criticism, doubts, failure, risk. And making our academic community to have the competent, competent strength enough to manage all these things, which seems to be like uh, difficult for the majority of our uh, like a system is uh, that change should happen because we should have the we should provide them with to have the potential to take risk we should give them the opportunity to not to like uh, uh, like uh, uh, have the uh, difficulty to manage the criticism and our criticism it should be again changed in such a way that we need more sort of uh, constructive criticism and all these things should be changed 
And so I am completing with uh, these words of uh, Jack Ma, the chairman of Alibaba Group. Like uh, he himself explained that he failed in many exams, and he failed in many uh, attempt to uh, get admitted to many schools and colleges, and even uh, he applied for uh, many jobs. His application got rejected, and when KFC came to China in uh, that time, and uh, 24 uh, like uh, people were attended for the interview, and 23 rejected except him. And later, he could really these provide these rejections provided him an opportunity to identify his strength, and he is coming out with a message to us that. i think we have to get used to rejection the only thing never give up and later because he could not get a simple job he became the chairman of the alibaba group of companies and the interesting thing is that by the age of 55 he retired from his company but the person who started kfc was he started at the age of 65 only so this is a contradictions and the one we are not getting is like it is not the end this is providing an opportunity for us to like try for the best and the highest and with this message i would like to conclude and i express my sincere thanks to the organizers for providing me this opportunity thank you very much sir thank you very much sir for being with us and this also uh, some of the messages which sir uh, shared Also goes in line with the Mental Health Day, which uh, it was on 10th October, and uh, uh, many a time we give up. It is over only when you give up, and uh, so when, when there is a, a, a hurdle in life, it means that you have to cross it, not to get stuck there uh, at that point, and think of why it has happened. and one more take home message of uh, uh, sir from life skill angle is that the crooked one is never touched so are you touched in a daily life by others and does your uh, straight forwardness affect uh, others uh, performance for bad things is a self check exercise for each one of us to check for ourselves and Uh, what we see in a person is if we may say it is success only and but what goes behind everyone even in our home in our uh, job we would have been so much well organized and we'll be carrying on our work but what people see do not see is what is going on behind what is the background information or the back office operations which we have done to show today's performance so the question is are you sailing in other back office uh, operations for your success it matters when it comes to a life skill education because in innovation club activity we also highlight on life skill uh, uh, action so sir they not only shared his thoughts related to the innovation hub but also shared of certain items of life skills which we have to follow as an individual as long as we live in this world and with that a few thoughts on the aspects we throw the floor open for anyone to discuss or, or ask sir on the, on the topic discuss and we be able to answer Please introduce yourself. Anyone who would like to ask sir a question, may kindly unmute and please go ahead. Ah, uh, hello. Yeah, actually, it was a really nice question. Uh, thank you, Radha Shankar, for, for this session. Uh, actually, uh, ma'am, uh, sir, actually, we are expecting two more sessions in depth because these are things we know. What are the things we get done? Because every day we are seeing something new. We get that day we will think 
we can do that uh, this business we can do but how to do that till now we don't know so that type of guidance if you provide means it is really good uh, the same thing we are feeling everywhere because while seeing some show uh, people are there so we can see hey this how market here we can do that but we are not doing it how we can do that uh, such type of guidance if your product provide means it is really good yeah of course uh, like uh, this type of programs uh, should not be the like uh, end of uh, this particular uh, day or uh, end of this uh, initiative these are the things which should be uh, like uh, progress further to the next level, next level and uh, one thing is that uh, for these things to be more effective a sort of physical meeting will be the most important one and that is the most uh, important requirement and uh, we need to have even so called residential programs that will provide more opportunities how uh, for more interactions and also sharing experience and uh, uh, like that we have to develop and uh, at mahatma gandhi university we are conducting several such programs and uh, you are welcome to participate uh, in our program and right now we initiated one program today and that will be for three day program that we initiated for uh, like getting uh, the exposure to the real heroes in the sense rural innovators and so called successful startups we have invited them and they are here sharing their experience not only about the success but also how like they could successfully manage the other steps yeah that's very important and also it's a Uh, a so called long term process also we have to conduct problem like uh, pro, pro this type of programs in various aspects uh, including what i mentioned knowledge to power means the activity that i mentioned that itself is a topic which has to be discussed in detail and uh, that too will differ from person to person based on the level of uh, his understanding about himself those these are indeed need deeper insights and more uh, personal discussion collaborative discussions and the extent of transformation that happens through such sessions will be will make them will make the person more successful that's the most important thing sir before uh, can i share my thoughts about this session sir yeah please <laughs> Uh, on hearing about your session, uh, we could understand that uh, what all motivation is required to have a startup and all. Uh, but sir, can I ask you one question? Is how we can do a start a startup? Like, what are the basic requirements or guidelines for having a startup? Uh, for the startup means how we can do it, sir. That's what I want to ask you, sir. yeah so there are practical examples like uh, maybe one of the practical examples maybe which you as a nodal officer of innovation club activities would have uh, encouraged your students to uh, do a startup yeah the, for this to happen we need to have more sort of networking that is the most important one and networking in the sense we should have Uh, like uh, we should have a direct visit and interaction to various incubators of the state especially in kerala if we consider ranging from kerala startup mission incubator to various other incubators are there at the university level at uh, uh, state government level and many such research and uh, like uh, incubation facilities are there incubators are there and we have to just like uh, 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 how we visit there and then we have to make some connection with them and based on that gradually we have to build up the innovation ecosystem and all this need some sort of time one thing and uh, some sort of more better networking that is very very important and a sort of active engagement uh, uh, with the students and for example uh, what now what we are doing is for example is that otm is well known for the rubber production rubber production as you know 
so the rubber uh, cost is uh, like uh, uh, always fluctuating and it is uh, like affecting the farmers uh, significantly and why because uh, the rubber is used uh, mainly for the conventional application and at the other context we had several discussion with the uh, different groups in the sense that there is international demand for rubber based health care products and when developing rubber into a health care product it should be processed and purified several times in various ways but during that process the cost of the material will increase so identifying value addition of a natural resource which is a regional which is of regional importance is an example that we are working with now so that is an example another thing is the spice that we are working with now we are trying to develop nutraceutical products from various spice products so now there is a heavy demand for nutraceutical especially after the covid there are much demand for immune boosters and other health related products especially uh, even related to specific conditions like uh, life cell disease women health geriatric health child health and so on so these are like emerging areas where much uh, demand for various products and to identify such things we have several such companies are there in ernakulam uh, especially spice producing bigger international players are located in and around ernakulam so we have several interaction with them we used to meet them we used to visit their factory we used to interact with their r&d team we used to have share our ideas with them and like that we need to develop a highly collaborative networking platform that is the most important thing and this is a very important platform where the basic rule is that no one can work as a stand alone entity and that time is over and just before this time if we are in education sector or research sector or anything we can do our own business in our own way we don't have to bother about others interaction but now the situation is changing here no one can stand or work as a stand alone entity the more we net the more we are networking the more we will develop and for building the ecosystem here we used to travel across various parts of kerala various parts of india and we even we like went up to the like uh, tribal community of attapadi to identify some of the problem to identify what are the opportunities there we went up to punjab to sign mou how the value added products they are producing from milk and how some of the things can be uh, like uh, implemented here and we went up to like various uh, almost in the southern region from iit research uh, madra iit uh, madras research park to bangalore biotech innovation center to ketak incubation to all these like agencies we are in active interaction so that type of visibility that we have to develop that is the thing uh, that uh, i mentioned that the responsibility of the academic community is changing we cannot blame the students anymore that if we are not providing the better platform they will search for other countries to identify the problem by considering that here problems are not there other than the typical problems that are being discussed in newspaper or tv channel so that's the real problem yeah thank you sir suppose if a student wants to uh, open a, say a porridge mix uh, industry because you spoke about uh, the nutrient supplements which are gaining for moment of what they should do for example what we know theoretically is trust we should mobilize the financial resources because many of us are not self sufficient we have to get a bank loan that is one second is we know uh, that uh, we have to register it so how to register it how to move on it can it be yes. like if the students make at their home and they sell it will it affect the rules and regulations that is what uh, shri gokul krishnan wants to force thank you yeah and uh, here comes another important thing that is also being part uh, is a part of the thing uh, like a continuation of the thing i mentioned that the state and the central government agencies are providing or uh, like they are mobilizing a large amount of uh, large quantities of uh, fund through various schemes for this type of 
student innovations so we have to like we have to have an awareness about such schemes and we have to make our students to apply for all these schemes they are like the government is like uh, looking for more student projects to come but they are not getting sufficient potential or competitive proposals so even they can get good amount of uh, like funding from government and also uh, second thing is that during this process they have to undergo different training they should not be trained academically they should be trained in such a way that they should be trained uh, with an industrial mentor with academic mentor with a business and marketing mentor and they should come out with their own decision it should not be the recommendation of a particular like a faculty member uh, to the student that you can start the startup this it, it is not like that the decision should be taken by the student but we have to provide all the ecosystem in such a way that like out of the for example 1000 student we have to ensure that uh, even one student at least uh, like uh, he or she might have like uh, uh, like he or she should get the exposure to all these opportunities that we should not miss that potential candidate in such a way that the nation is looking for the next ratan data or next level of uh, nationally committed uh, industrialist so we don't we are not sure whether one student like uh, sitting in uh, in front of us may be the next ratan data so we should not miss that one Anybody else wants to ask question to sir? Hi, sir. Uh, sir, if, uh, if there is no issue, can you share your contact number? If any. Yeah, it's. I think it's in the like. Uh, I will uh, share the slide. that's in the first slide i think so here is uh, whether it is visible to you i is accessible yeah or you can uh, contact by email also radhakrishnan ek r a d h a k r i s h n a n e k at m g u .ac .in yeah thank you sir yeah sir please show the slide once more sir i want to take that screenshot yeah. is it okay we also in uh, involve students in thanking our resource person now that uh, the gopal krishnan sir was kind enough to raise his query will um, i request shri gopal krishnan to uh, propose the vote of thanks on behalf of all of us to the resource person followed by dr prasita unikrishnan who is also the nodal uh, officer for the innovation club activity at थैंक yeah first of all thank you dadashan sir because 
when we start in the class there are many difficult situation came uh, in between also so with the patients you continue the class without any uh, further issues so first of all thank you for the section and it was really nice sir actually i am concerned you told we need to physically interact but actually i am working in hyderabad actually i am not able to physically interact that's one of the issue uh, so if there is any group or something or whatsapp group or something is there you can add and then we can work as a team because i am also eager to do something and past one and two three years i am trying but uh, like what you did now we are seeing something and when time of implementation something will happen maybe fear maybe money something is there it's not happening yeah of course you can uh, contact to us and uh, as i mentioned we have several uh, uh, programs are also there you can be part of uh, the this we are all like uh, trying to build the ecosystem so that's the most important thing and it's a like what I, I can say is that it's a golden age of this innovation that all the things are changing and like uh, so I suggest all the interest to how to come forward and uh, let's collaborate network and work together and the ultimate purpose should be for the like uh, building a population so here I mentioned we cannot be successful by working alone we need to work together because when we join uh, with each other only, like something will come out as successful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, recently I started one uh, MBA operational management. Uh, okay, that is fine. So, uh, friends, in this session, uh, we, uh, we also highlight of how to use the software. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, Sri Gopal Krishnan was kind enough to express the vote of thanks. And all you have to remember when you say a word of thanks is the name of the resource person, the topic, and also who organized it. Only three matters. Joining it with a small will make it much better. So, friends, so from today's program on innovation uh, hub, we also had three major life skill uh, message. One is related to success. So, when you're when you, everybody is facing the success, your memory will take you to the far. Second is never give up in life. It is over only when you give up. Third is if you you will get better. So with life skills and with this soft skills, we also have uh, uh, share with you the possibilities of uh, getting certain in national education policy to the innovation is the major agenda and it also opens up avenues for betterment of the society through innovation activity creating alternate economy see innovation without culminating in eco economy upliftment is not going to be of use neither to the innovator nor to the society so all these are available and we also request you to log into www.swayam.gov.in so that you will be benefited of the various courses related to innovation available in the MOOCs, world's largest mass online open course uh, of the government of India, which also uh, have the courses of IGNO listed for you to opt and to study at your um, leisure time. In case of joining a SOM courses, you need not take the time to You need to write your exam, you have to pay the examination fee. So with this thought of uh, what we have discussed so far, 
I request Dr. Prasita V. Krishna to uh, uh, conclude and say express our gratitude to the resource person, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Radha Krishna, who is also a postdoctorate who has returned from uh, uh, Japan after doing his uh, career. So actually, may, very rarely academicians come back. It shows his dedication to give back to the society. That's what his life example is showing us in our day-to-day -day life message. With this, over to Dr. Prasita Omnikrishna. Thank you, madam. Uh, so, thank you. On behalf of all at Igno Risha Center Kuchin, I wholeheartedly, first of all, express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Radha Krishnan, sir, for, spend, uh, for sparing his valuable time um, for this session. And I'm so happy to share that uh, at the first call itself, he agreed for the session gracefully, and he told that I will definitely uh, do the session. So I'm highly grateful to you, sir, for the session. Next, I would also like to thank my colleague, Dr. Sibu, who introduced me to sir, uh, and because of whose uh, uh, help, I must say, I got the number of sir and I could contact him for the session. So I'm also grateful to Dr. Sibu for helping me eh, to get, get on to touch with sir. Next, I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to our regional director, Dr. T. S. Dorothy Madam, under whose guidance and leadership we are able to conduct this innovation program activity uh, in a way every month. So a big gratitude to her, her as well. Next, I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to all dear students uh, who joined for the session, but this session is being also transmitted uh, Facebook Live uh, to our Facebook page of IGNO Regional Center Coaching. So students who are viewing from there also, I express my sincere gratitude to each one of you for sharing your time to participate in the session. I'm sure all of you would have gained some food for thought uh, after the session and definitely some basic idea uh, sir has put on, on to us wherein he says that physical presence networking and is very much essential and awareness about the various schemes which are available over time is also very very essential some basic things he has shared in this session and we all need to work upon the same I will also express my sincere gratitude uh, to our back, back office technical team uh, Dr. Shri Mohammad Ansar and Ms. Reshma Suresh, who is transmitting this uh, Facebook live session directly from our Facebook page of Ahasi Coaching for their assistance. And I express my sincere gratitude to each one of you all. So, thank you all for uh, sharing your time and in a time for the session. Thank you once again. Gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you. I uh, have to collaborate with you for uh, any uh, further initiative. Thank you. Thank you.